one way or another, and we always say it takes two to tango, mm -hmm. um, the court can consider that. Most judges, as I've seen it, will not really go much beyond 60-40 based on that factor alone. You can't use the courts to be punitive. In other words, they're not going to punish somebody just because there was some indiscretion during the marriage. If, and, and, and that's a general statement. Um, I think it's important to point out, again, with the equitable distribution statute, conduct is one of many factors that a court needs to consider when distributing pro um, property. So it's just one factor, which is why David is mentioning you're not going to get more than 60, 40 in most cases. Most cases. The other thing I want to point out too, in Massachusetts there is a little difference in terms of what gets equitably distributed. What's part of the marital estate? Rhode Island, you do have a statute that says if a piece of property or bank account, whatever it is, is acquired through inheritance or gift, it's not part of the marital estate as long as it's not commingled. In Massachusetts, everything's part of the marital estate. So if you get it by gift, if you inherit it, even if you don't commingle it, it is part of the marital estate. It, it, we don't have a provision in the statute that excludes that particular asset. And the other thing that's important too, nothing can be part of the marital estate if you have an individual that comes to you with a valid prenuptial agreement. That also hasn't been invaded or exactly, and or things commingled. haven't changed mm -hmm. exactly. What about um, premarital in Massachusetts? You can look at the in the appreciation and value and how long they've had it. If if somebody had a piece of real estate and they lived in it for twenty five years, that's going to be marital estate. I, that's going to be a marital asset. Even if the person owned it prior to the yes. Marriage. What gets most sticky with all of this? Equitable sounds like a very reasonable word to work with, but equitable certainly seems like that's the uh, that's a critical issue for everyone. I think this is fair. No, I think this is fair. And part two to that question, I guess, is um, if something is appreciated in value, how does how does that become evaluated? I, I imagine you can assign some dollar value to some things, but others not. How does that work? Well, first of all. Um, Part of determining what's appreciated and how much is the same way you determine what the value of any of the assets in, in a state are. If you need to, you get appraisals. If mm -hmm. it's real estate, you get a real estate appraisal. Um, if it's a personal property that's worth a lot, um, a collection of stamps or mm -hmm. coins or whatever, you can get appraisals. So the lawyer, in conjunction with the client, has to go out and get appraisals if they're necessary to determine a value. Other things are less difficult. Bank account, you know, you get the statements, you look at them. Um, stocks, you can set a starting point what the value was when the marriage um, happened and what it is at the date of the divorce. So you can get those numbers. That's part of the process. Get the numbers together, determine what the part is. And then in Rhode Island, I always say it's sort of, you can look at it if you want to equate it to a partnership. It's a 50 50 yeah. partnership. That's what you start at. And then you move from there if any of the factors determine a reason to move off of the 50-50. Um, I always tell clients that equitable distribution does not always mean 50-50. It means what's fair and reasonable. Not always 50-50, it's what's fair and reasonable, and it's um, what the court determines according to all Based the Based on all those factors. The factors all the and that's about distribution of assets. What about alimony and how does that So play that's into where it? we're going to go next. Same thing. It, it's part of the um, uh, statute of mass. We call them the 208 section 34 stat, uh, factors, which is your divorce statute. Same thing for alimony as it would be for division of property. That's where you look at the age, the health, the occupation of the individual, their station in life, um, what they've been accustomed to, their lifestyle, what their lifestyle has been. Go ahead. In Rhode Island, <clears throat> the court does equitable distribution first yeah. because you have to see what the needs of that person who might be entitled to alimony is going to be. If someone is left with millions of dollars in assets, they might not have a need for alimony if the assets can produce enough income for them to live off of. So the court will do equitable distribution determination first. Once that's done, the court will then look at exactly those factors Jackie said. And it's interesting. Many people, I had a case that goes way back. And the client came to me. His wife was disabled, clearly um, many physical problems, couldn't work and wasn't going to work again, and not that old. And um, I had negotiated and recommended to him a settlement where we're going to give your wife more than 50% of the assets, including the house, 
and um, in exchange they were going to waive alimony. And he was of the opinion, he heard, well, I heard Rhode Island only gives rehabilitative alimony. There's no such thing as permanent alimony anymore. I advised him that that was not the way I read the law and the way this, most cases were producing rehabilitative alimony, if any, but I sat under the right circumstances with the right judge, which we had in that case for that mm -hmm. particular issue, a permanent alimony award is going to be made. He didn't like my advice. He left me. He went to another attorney. They ended up trying the case. The wife got the house, among other assets, and awarded permanent alimony, which the Supreme Court said um, in its decision on appeal that Rhode Island, under the right circumstances, still has permanent alimony. Most cases, you're looking at rehabilitative alimony, which is someone's been out of the workforce for a period of time, maybe raising children, um, taking a little break from the career to do that. How much time and how much money do they need to get themselves to bridge that gap back into the workforce? So most cases, we do look at rehabilitative alimony versus permanent alimony, but it depends on the circumstances and the factors that Jackie listed in the statute. And what I've seen in Rhode Island for purposes of rehabilitative alimony, usually between three and five years. And every case is different. Every case is different. So, uh, but I have seen between three and five years in Rhode Island. Now in Massachusetts, unfortunately, there is not rehabilitative alimony. It's called open-ended alimony. It's permanent. So unless there's a serious modification in income or some serious change, it's going to be a permanent alimony award. Well, death and taxes are permanent. No what happens with what's considered to be permanent? Is, there, is that really true, or are there other conditions that would make that permanent settlement now an open case? For example, uh, even looking at the situation as it is today, people lose their jobs, something happened, they can barely provide for themselves, never mind alimony for someone else. What happens then? Then you have a right to file a modification in either state, but you have to prove the standard is you have to prove that there's a substantial change of circumstance. You substantial. That's substantial. If you make $10 more a week, that's not substantial. Right. In Rhode Island, it also depends on how it's incorporated <clears throat> into a court order. Yep. As we talked about before, child support, visitation, custody, anything to do with the children, always modifiable. The court retains jurisdiction over that. Equitable distribution, once that's done, which is the division of the assets, it's done. You're not going to go back to court and get a modification of that unless a party hid an asset um, or was um, misrepresented, misrepresented an asset or if something of that nature with this fraud or something where you can go under one of the rules and say that this judgment, which was final, should be vacated because of fraud, misrepresentation, or mistake. Mm -hmm. It has to be um, usually something significant. But an alimony, if it's a, an al award of alimony, it's not incorporated into a, a contract, a property settlement agreement, there's potential for modification. If it's a part of a contract that says non-modifiable, then you can't modify then it. Then it can't be modified. Then you can't modify it. Well, we understand that uh, divorce proceedings are proceedings, a process over a period of time. If on a certain day you start to evaluate assets, say for example the stock market, and then uh, three months out, you're not quite finished with that, that value could have been halved sure. as it has happened. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. what happens with that? Do you go back to square one and reevaluate as of today's we, date? We've been getting some questions about this, especially Time where, right. um, like with a pension for instance, it takes a while to divide a pension because there's a process you need to go through. Uh, particular court orders need to be prepared. It's called a qualified domestic relations order without getting too complicated. It's more for tax purposes that we need that. With pensions, it does take a while to get that document prepared, get it approved by whomever the fund manager is, and get it entered with the court. Sometimes it can take six to nine months. So we're getting questions that say, well, nine months ago, this was worth mm -hmm. X. It was worth a heck of a lot more then than it is now. I want what was then versus what was now. It doesn't work now, that way. What happens with most quadros? Unless the asset's been dissipated. Right. Or waste, waste. So waste. if the um, quadros entered as of a certain date, and that's what you would do. You peg it to the date of divorce. The hearing was on you know, March 1st. As of March 1st, whatever the value of the asset is, um, you're going to divide. And then the quadro goes on to say, and each party is going to take whatever increases or decreases are as of the time that the quadro is entered. So if it was worth X number of dollars on March 1st and it's going down 10% and it was a 50-50 division, both sides are going to have their, si their share reduced by that percent.